Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the OU Innovation Hub's Digital Fabrication Lab. In this video, I'm going to go over the DeWalt power tools that you'll need to learn to receive the yellow certification. Whenever you're using any of these power tools, you should always somehow secure the piece you're working on so that it doesn't jump away from you. So when you're using a saw like this, one hand is on the trigger, your second hand is on this nifty little handle that they molded in for you. To make it go, you'll push down on the thumb switch and you'll pull the trigger. Now, whenever you start this saw, you have to start the saw back off of the piece. You cannot pull the trigger if the blade is up against the piece of wood you intend to cut. You have to let it come up to speed before you begin your cut. It also has this automatically retracting blade guard so that as you start, this blade guard will automatically retract as you progress into your wood. Make sure that you keep the base of the saw flat on the wood. You also don't want to penetrate too far a lot of times because there may be something underneath the piece you're working on. You should always elevate your piece off of something or let it hang over the edge of a table, but uh, many times you're simply not going to want to use the full depth of the saw. In that case, what you'll do is you can move the saw like so, and by moving the base, it essentially sets the saw at a different depth. Now, in order to lock that in place, on the other side, the right hand side of the saw, there is this lock right here. It's just a simple little screw that locks the base in place. Just like so, very simple to use. You probably never need to change the blade on this thing. If you do, please let one of us know. Um, it can sometimes be a little bit tricky. But the blades we have in here are multi-purpose blades, which are good for ripping pretty much any type of 2x4 or sheet of plywood, anything you want to do. If you want finer cuts, you're probably going to want to use one of the stationary power tools over there. But using this saw is really, really simple, and it's an awful lot of fun. Moving on now to the little jigsaw, saber saw. It's got, it goes by a few different names. But this little guy is a reciprocating saw with the blade that just goes up and down. It typically cuts on the upstroke unless you put a reverse blade in it. Now the place I see people get into trouble with this saw is how to put the blade in. A lot of times it's not seated properly. I've even seen people put the blade in backwards. The blade rests on this little bearing here in the lower front part of the saw. You'll set the blade in that bearing, open this little lever here at the front, and it clips right in. These are T-shank blades because they kind of have a T-shape to them. Then to make this thing go, You'll unlock the trigger here, just like any other trigger lock you might ever see. Red is the danger symbol, so if you see the red, it means you're good to go, and you'll simply pull the trigger. Whenever you're using this saw, make sure to keep the base flat on your piece of wood. Of course, secure your wood, and your second hand generally goes right here. They've, got, they've made a little grip section. Just make sure you keep the saw flat on your workpiece as you go. The great thing about this saw is it allows you to cut corners. You should never cut corners. But if you want to cut corners, this is the saw that you can do it with. So that's pretty much it for that saw. This guy here does have a variable speed trigger. And it's got this little piston that just goes in and out. Now, I see people get stuck with this one as well when it comes time to change the blade. We have lots of different blades for these saws that are in the drawer labeled blades and bits. The blade tells you what it's for right on there. I recommend you don't use a blade any longer than you have to because extra blade leads to extra bending in things. You can get in trouble quickly. To insert a blade into this saw, you lift up this giant lever here near the front. Usually people don't lift it up far enough and the blade doesn't go in. So you really got to crank it all the way up. In the front of the saw here, there are two slots. You can either mount the blade this way, which is the standard way, so that the blade faces down, like so, but the other slot allows you to also mount it sideways. And you can, of course, mount the blade in both directions in either slot, for a total of four different ways to mount your saw blade. This blade here is rather long, and like I said, you don't want to use any more blade than you have to. So I would only use a blade this long if I'm cutting something fairly thick. The plate on the front of the saw can also be varied. Um, just a little bit. You've got about an inch of travel here. To change the position of this, you push this little yellow circle button on the left side of the saw and you pull it out to one of its positive stops. For the most part though, with the wise choice in blade length, you just leave this all the way back. And it has a little bit of pivot in there. 
And like every other saw, you want to make sure to keep this plate flat on your workpiece as you go to use it. One hand here, there's variable speed trigger. You've got the trigger lock right above the trigger. Second hand is going right in here somewhere. Get a nice firm grip on it, secure your workpiece, and have at it. Like all these other tools here, you must wear safety glasses. You might want to wear earmuffs and whatever the protective gear, but at a minimum, you need to wear safety glasses because things can get thrown in your eyes, and that's just no fun. Another tool you might want to use is this little palm router. This thing is handy. A little router is used with various shaping bits to create grooves and change the edge profile of pieces of wood. It's only got a couple controls here. You've got the on-off switch up front and your speed control knob. I recommend you start with one and work your way up until you can kind of see what works best. Changing the depth of this thing requires you to unlock this collar here and then rotate the DeWalt logoed ring here. It'll go up and down the grooves and change the depth of your router bit. Now, to change the router bit, you need to get access to the spindle lock. In order to do that, though, you have to remove this whole collar here. So you pinch the two black tabs on the DeWalt ring and it will release the collar. Once you've got the collar off, you can now access the spindle lock button. Push the little yellow button here and the spindle won't spin. You're going to grab a router bit and you'll insert it here into the collet and then tighten the collet finger tight and then finish it off with the wrench. Please don't use vice grips on this because it will eventually mar this thing up. To put the collar back on now, you'll notice inside here there are two little rivets sticking out slightly on one side of the collar. You're going to align that with one of the two slots down the body of the router here. And then push it until it clicks back to the black collar. You can now adjust your depth like so. The key things with this tool are to make sure that your collet is locked down tight with a wrench, your collar here is secure, and that you keep a firm grip on this because it's going to want to try to wander as you use it. So I recommend you clamp a straight edge along your workpiece and use the flat edge of this base plate then to follow that straight edge so you get nice straight cuts. Because very rarely are you going to use something like this to cut curves. If you want to route curves, we can use our giant CNC machine over there. But this thing's great for just quick little trim jobs and cutting short little grooves in small pieces of wood. Well, that's all for the yellow category DeWalt power tools. To achieve yellow certification, please go watch all the other videos that are tagged in yellow and take their necessary quizzes as well. That way you can make pretty much whatever you want to make in here. I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the OU Innovation Hub's Digital Fabrication Lab. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And what do you want to make?